the Clemson Tigers. Dabo Sweeney last year was obviously a bit of a disappointment. And when you look at Clemson 10 and 3, I mean, not great. Their post game win expectancy is the thing that really surprised me. You go based on the numbers last year, and this team was closer to an 8 win team as opposed to a 10 win team. 7.73 and 4.27 is their post game win expectancy record. That's it's seven and a half wins. This team was not good last year, and obviously they had a bunch of injury issues, etc. The biggest issue, of course, was on offense. Number 111 in PPA per drive in that spot. Returning production is number 35 in the country, 72%. Uh, they're bringing back a ton on offense, and that, of course, was the weak link last year. So that's obviously a little bit tricky. 79% of the offense comes back, 64% of the defense comes back. But the biggest losses here are obviously at the coordinator positions. Tony Elliott leaves the offense to head over to Virginia, and uh, Venables leaves the defense to head over to Oklahoma. And then they hired from within. So maybe there's continuity there. Brandon Streeter, of course, the new offensive coordinator. The roster strength is obviously really, really good. But this is going to be tricky. Last year, number 45 in PPA margin. That's not good. Now, net points per drive, that's pretty good. Number 31, okay, this is not what you expect. From Clemson, though, uh, again, Brandon Streeter, the new offensive coordinator. Let's talk about the offense here. Uh, we still haven't really figured out what happened to DJ Uyangalele, the quarterback here. It, he had 56% completions, nine touchdowns to 10 interceptions, number 107 passing success rate last year, and he didn't really impact in the run game either. Was he completely overwhelmed by Georgia and just lost all of his confidence, or was he just not as good as we assumed he would be? Like, is it something that happened early in the season that he wasn't able to get out of? Because he looked so much better in his freshman season. We still don't know what's going on with that. It, as far as the wide receiver position, there's very little versatility there. Uh, Ingata should be a leader for that unit. The offensive line should be strong, but they weren't in 2021. Uh, there's, no hand, uh, there's no transfer help, and they hired internally. I, I want to see what this looks like. What is this something that's going to end up costing them they do have the running back, Will Shipley, and he is awesome. I mean, he's every bit what you assumed. The other part of this is DJ, we all assume, will be the starter. But does Cade Klubnik come in and take the job? We've seen Dabo let freshmen come in and take over jobs in the past. If DJ is not up to snuff, uh, you look at the schedule, it starts out great. But once you get to at Wake Forest, NC State, at Boston College, at Florida State, Who's the quarterback at that position, right? Um, let's look at the defense here. This team, by the way, projected favorite in every single game, which, of course, they are. I mean, they, we, we all knew that. In uh, On the defense, play callers Wes Goodwin. He was Venable's guy. He was uh, an assistant safeties coach. Mickey Kahn is the co-defensive coordinator, but I believe the play caller is going to be uh, Wes Goodwin. Defense is the only way that this team got to 10 wins last year. Uh, two of the losses that they had were only by a touchdown. So this team was not far off because the defense was awesome. Number seven in PPA per drive defense, number two in points per play. The entire defensive line comes back. They've only got one starting linebacker back, and none of their backups had more than 183 snaps. Uh, very few of them had even close to that. They lost three starting defensive backs. Four guys that are coming back had 334-plus snaps, and four more had over 128. So... They've got experience back there, and Dabo is known for this. Anytime that you can blow out somebody, you do that early, you get in the young players, you let them get game time experience, etc., where they are actually under fire. Let's look at the keys to the season. Um, absolutely have to figure out this quarterback situation. If you want to compete in a big way, if you want to compete for a playoff appearance, you got to hope guys like uh, uh, Brzee and Shipley stay healthy. That's a big thing. I mentioned earlier injuries hurt them last year. Both of those guys were out at some point last year. The offense cannot be that bad again. Cannot be that bad again. On defense, it's as easy as just handing it over to Venable's understudy. I find that hard to believe, but maybe so. We've seen young guys come in and be very, very successful in the past. Expectations on that ball, sky high for a first-timer. Um, they're going to rely on you because the offense was not great last year. The only saving grace was that defense. So you got a first-time coordinator coming in, calling plays, trying to figure this out. It's going to be tricky. Uh, what does the new era look like, right? 
They only took in two transfers. Uh, one of them is a guy that had already been there. Another is a D2 kid. There's a lot of questions around this program. This is the beginning of that. We start to get answers for this as soon as August gets here. That first game is in September, September 5th on a Monday night at Georgia Tech. We start to see what this really looks like. Was Dabo just a product of some really good coordinators over the years? Or were those coordinators a product of Dabo's culture? And basically, you can throw in anybody there. I would expect him to know better than me, obviously. this is I think it's fair to question basically everything at this point with any program. So I'm going to question a little bit. I've got them at 10 and two on the season. Uh, their win total is 10 and a half. Uh, now to go over that 10 and a half is plus odds, plus 105. Uh, to win the conference, they are a minus 140 favorite. Uh, to win the division here in the ACC Atlantic, they are minus 250. So this is obviously your hands-on favorite. I've got them losing at Boston College, and I've got them losing to Miami. Uh, now, would it shock me if they lose to NC State? No. Would it shock me if Clemson loses at Wake Forest? Actually, yeah, kind of. Um, a loss to Louisville, a loss at Notre Dame, a loss to South Carolina. Like uh, Nothing is off the table for me this season, but I think there is enough talent and enough continuity. Um, I, I believe that... 10-2 and two would be a pretty good year for this bunch. That's the way that I'm going to go on this. Uh, and maybe I'm wrong. I would love to know your thoughts in the comments. But 10-2 and two looks pretty good. Uh, winning the ACC Atlantic, I think, would be pretty good here. I, I think this is a good year for Clemson. So 10-2, and two, not crazy, but not exactly playoff worthy either. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at Chris B. Giannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.